communication and internet technologies. What are the learning objectives? By the end of this chapter, you should be able to show understanding of the purpose and benefits of networking devices. <clears throat> so those days we used to say networking computers, but now we say networking devices. Why? There are many devices, even phones become part of a network. Show understanding of the characteristics of a LAN, local area network, and a WAN, wide area network. Explain the client, server, and peer-to-peer -peer models of network computers, different models of networking. And understand thin client and thick client, and the difference between, differences between them, two different types of client. Client meaning, not, uh, not, uh, not a customer going into a shop, but or a service, but this is a this server, client, server. Server is a thing that will serve the, uh, serve the client with many you know, applications, files, printing, and various services given the server. The client is the user, the one who is using the services of the server. So there are two kinds of clients also. So we'll be learning on that. So understanding of the bus, star, mesh, and hybrid topologies, uh, different kinds of architecture, and those types are called topologies, the way uh, a network is designed. So understanding of cloud computing, cloud computing, which means storing your data, not on your computer, but on a, another computer, somebody else's computer. So the th there are third parties who offer these services or if it's a company, the company server, you can upload to the company server and keep, and we'll be learning about the advantages and all that, because when you save your uh, files on the cloud, or maybe uh, like the Google Drive is an example, Google Drive, I also use it, you can use it, it's free up to 15 GB or 17 GB, it's free. What is the advantage you can, you need not carry your computer everywhere you go. You just get a, get hold of a computer or a device with internet connection, log into your Google Drive or your cloud drive, and then everything is there. You don't have to carry your computer. That's a big advantage. Only you need the internet facility. And nowadays, there's no place without internet. So understanding of the differences between and implications of the use of wireless and wired networks. Wireless and wired networks. Started with wired networks, the history. There were no wireless networks earlier. Wireless is a later development. Describe the hardware that, uh, that is used to support a LAN. What is hardware used for a LAN? Describe the role and function of a router in a network. Show understanding of Ethernet and how collisions are detected and avoided collisions. That's if you if you are talking in a telephone call, both both persons talk at the same time. There's a collision. Right? None of them will understand. Both will not understand each other. <clears throat> so same way data. When you transmit data also, there can be collisions. And how? Understand how the Ethernet and how uh, understanding of Ethernet. <clears throat> Ethernet is a uh, part of the networking thing. How collisions are detected and avoided. And understanding of bit streaming. Data goes bit by bit, generally, bit by bit. So it's called streaming. In a stream, it goes. Understanding of the differences between the World Wide Web and the Internet. The so World Wide Web is software, and the Internet is hardware. 
it's not the same. Though many people think that www or the World Wide Web or the web for short is the internet or both are the same. No, it's not. The internet is the hardware, the network, the infrastructure. www is <clears throat> software using the infrastructure. Other services like email also, same way. Email is software. It uses the internet to provide that service. Describe the hardware that is used to support the internet. What is the hardware needed? Explain the use of IP addresses in the transmission of data over the internet. IP address. Explain how a uniform resource locator URL is used to locate a resource on the World Wide Web, www. And the role of the domain name service, DNS. What does DNS do? The evolution of the purpose and benefits of networking. Before networking came, each person's computer, highly private, 100% private, no one else can have access without logging into that computer itself. They were called standalone computers, standalone, not network. So when the networking came, right, what for what purposes were they used? And they were classified like wide area network, WAN. Today, a typical WAN is characterized by the following. It will be used by an organization or a company to connect sites or branches. So if you take a bank, the branches are connected. They're also called sites, like on-site, off-site. Huh? <clears throat> the site where the computers are kept. It will not be owned by the organization or company. The whole network, including the, the cable, those days it was cable, the companies can't, or the organization can't own it. Right? It will be leased from a public switched telephone network company, PSTN, public switched telephone network company. <clears throat> so that is why. The computers and all that are owned by the organization, but the telephone line, you have to pay a very big amount and get it. So I'll just explain a little bit. It's a diagram. This is a PSTN, Public Switch Telephone Network. Why is it called like that? These are switches or boxes you may see you may have seen on the roadside there are like cabinets or like cabinets like iron safes they are there and if you are lucky you may have seen people from their technicians they open this door and then there are a whole lot of wires inside and they either they will remove a wire connect a wire or something like that switching so like those boxes there are several so from from town, from this town to that town, there's no lines going like that. Now see from your home, you will see few lines going. Your neighborhood, the lines are going. Then when they get connected, likewise from a town to the other town, there may be hundreds or thousands of lines. So you can't be uh, drawing one line from here to every telephone. It will be a problem. So uh, what to do is, you get connected to a switch like this. And then from there, just one line goes to another switch. Or several lines, but not all the telephone lines go. So depending on the position of this and the location. And from there again, yeah, after going through several switches, it can reach far away telephone. So A wants to call C. If he will have to go through this, then from here to that one, and maybe several switches like this, and then finally reach C. But this, the moment the call is over, somebody else will take. 
the same line B. We'll take a call either to C or D or someone else, but the same line will be used by another one. So it's all shared like public switch telephone network. But if you want, you can pay a high amount or a large amount to the provider. Like say in Sri Lanka, it's a CLT. You can um, pay and get this line not just one line, but dedicated. It's called a dedicated line. And that also, not buying. The correct term is not buying, it's on lease. You obtain it on a lease agreement. So annually you pay. Then others can't use this. Other users can't use this for their faults or data transmission or whatever it is. This is continuously connected Let's say, for example, from B to C. So if these are two connect computers, so this is the head office and this is a branch of a bank, then they are connected, whether they are using it or not, whether they are calling or sending data or not, it's always this line is connected. That's what you call dedicated. <clears throat> a dedicated communication link will be provided by the PSTN. The transmission medium will be fiber optic cable. So now the latest is fiber optic very fast and reliable. Transmission within the van will be from switch to switch. As I told you, the switch will connect the van to each site. There will not be any end systems connected directly to the van. End systems mean user. End user. Then local area network land. And with that, we'll look at the, the terms also. Why data network is a network connecting computers on different sites, possibly thousands of kilometers apart. So even international can have, like I know that British Council long time ago, they had their own network international. So they had uh, video conferencing, not through internet, but their own network, which was very clear and very effective. So that is possible with a WAN, WA. Then local area network, a network connecting computers in a single room. Maybe in your room, you have two, you have, there are two roommates in a uh, room and then they have each one has a computer. Those two can be connected as a local area network. In a single building, that means maybe in a house, different rooms, or in a small office, a shop, or on a single site. So maybe uh, a school. The school may be having a computer lab, which has about 30, 40 computers, and they are all networked. And to that, maybe the office is connected, school office, the accounts department, principal, like that, they, are, they can be connected. So that's a local area network, but geographically restricted to one site, one single site. So what are the, uh, other than that, other than that, the services are the same. The operation is like this, except this uh, lease line is, not there, and you can you can own the differences. The local area you can the organization or the individual can own everything. So it's a small. If you are connecting uh, two computers in a room or in a house, you can have a, a very simple cable. You can buy it and connect. One of the benefits of networking, rather than having standalone computers, if there are two or more computers. If they are standalone, one thing, and the network, another thing. Just a quick one brief example is a standalone computers, you want printouts, will need a printer for each computer. Right? Whereas if it is network, the server can have one printer and the other the users, clients can be can reuse the same printer. Of course, there'll be a queue if they are trying to print at the same time. 
But still, resource-wise, the it's very economical. You don't have to buy three printers for three computers. Just have one, which can be shared. And it's very rarely all three will want to make a printout at the same time. So how how are these economized? Like application server. What are applications? MS Office, MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and those kinds of things. Uh, can be. The server will have it, and then the user will use them without having their own computer. Even the web is the same, web, web server, web browser. So imagine uh, if this is not a web server, just a server, file server, then these clients don't have the files in their uh, computers. They will use this file. Even if they create a file, it will be here. So you saved it there so that this client also can access it. <clears throat> or this user can come on another day to this terminal or device and access his own files. So those are advantages. Then um, file server is that file server and the application server, same. Either a package or a file can be used. Then print server is what I briefly mentioned earlier. A printer can be connected to the server. Then these users can share it, use it instead of installing a printer for each client device. Email, email also is possible through a network. And paperless office. Earlier, we used to have printed copies of letters, uh, invoices, records, any letters received, letters sent, all those were filed in a cabinet, filing cabinet full of paper. But now, where do we file? You can file them here. You send the original to the customer, but save the copy here on the server instead of printing it and filing in the filing cabinet. That's, a, that's why it's called paperless office. There are less paper. Internet working. Internet work. Internet work. Right? It's a network of networks. LANs are connected to VANs, which are in turn connected to the internet to allow access to resources worldwide. So from full world is connected to each other. The other technology is defining the modern era. Namely, mobile devices and wireless networking started to become commonly used in the 2000s. Earlier, only the computers. But now you get telephones and various devices. What is a client server model? A PC attached to a LAN would access the server as a client. So he's, the client is asking the server for some service. The client server mode of operation nowadays is different. The client is a web browser connected to the internet. So, <clears throat> different, slightly different definition now. Client, it's a web browser. What are web browsers like Edge, Chrome, <clears throat> Explorer, Internet Explorer, like that? So, they become the client because you are connected to the web server there. The server is a web server hosted on the internet. The server provides an application and the client uses the application. And out of that, we saw that there are two types of client. One is thin and the other one is thick. You might think it's a fat client. You know? Thin client and fat client. <laughs> but don't confuse and mix up the words. It's thick client. <coughs> Excuse me. So the thin client chooses an application to run on the server. Thin client chooses an application provided by the server. So there's a slight difference there. Here you are using the chooses an application to run on the server. 
no way of running it on its own, but here chooses an application provided by the server. Possibly carries out some processing before running the application on the server and also or after receiving output from the application. So here sends input data to the server when requested by the application. So that's all. That's a thin client. <coughs> Not doing much work. Thin and weak. Things like that. Thin and weak can't do much work. But here thick and strong can do more work. Then third also, here receives output from the application, that's all. But yeah, alternatively, possibly downloads the application from the server and runs the application itself. Right? So, so there's a big difference here from the thin client to the client. The client can even download the application to its computer, uh, yeah, and then run it. So the terms, client server, an architecture where a client runs an application provided by a server on a network. And the thin client is a client that only provides input and uh, receives uh, output from the application. And thick client, we saw what it is. There's a definition again. The client, a client that carries out at least some of the processing itself, so it's sharing the work of the server. <clears throat> yeah, okay, the client server approach. Server stores database or access from client system. Database, the server stores a database for what? to be accessed from a client system, by a client system. Server stores a web application for client system to find or sometimes supply information. It's an application. Then server stores a web application for client system to carry out an e-commerce of financial transaction. So all this is client server. Then file sharing. User uploads files to a file server another user to download these from the server. So it's an advantage. One user uploads so that another user can download. A peer-to-peer -peer network operates with each peer or network computer storing some of the files. Each peer can therefore act as a client and request a file from another peer or it can act as a server when another peer requests the download of a file. So peer-to-peer -peer is client, server, both, both in one. Not really, you can't say client, server, but can act. It can act as a server when another peer requests the download of a file because it's sharing. Each peer storing some of the files not just one place concentrated on the server, but here sharing, each one has. So whenever one computer needs something which it doesn't have, we'll have to request from another. The advantages of peer-to-peer -peer model, it avoids the possibility of congestion on the network when many clients are simultaneously attempting to download file. So if there's only one place where the file is stored, then there'll be congestion if so many are trying to download. But here, what happens is when there are many places of the same file, then it's easy. Parts of a file can be downloaded separately. That's another one. You must be already knowing about the big torrents and all that. How you download from various places and you also contribute to a set. Others can download from your computer to download it. The parts of a file can be downloaded separately. So what happens? One part from this computer, another part from another computer, and likewise, it's quick. It's downloading rather than downloading the whole thing from one location. Parts of a, yeah, the parts are available from more than one host. That's an advantage. Advantages of client-server model. 
It allows an organization to control the downloading and use of files. The files can be better protected from malware attacks because the files are stored on one server which should be regularly scanned using appropriate antivirus software. So that's an advantage of having uh, having um, in different place uh, in one place, right? So the files can be better protected from malware attacks because the files are stored on one server, which will be regularly scanned using appropriate antivirus software. So it's easy, easy security control in one place. So just scan it regularly, it's one, rather than scanning many, several places, several locations. So the network topologies are the way they are connected. This is This diagram is a point-to-point -point network. Just one cable connecting both connectors, both computers. Then this figure is called a bus network. There's one long cable connecting with short cables each client or each, not client, each uh, terminal. They're called terminals. <clears throat> And what is the topology? The configuration of a network that defines how the various devices on the network are connected. Bus topology contains one shared link to which all devices are connected. One shared link. This is shared by all the devices. End system, a computer or server connected to a network. Mesh topology contains direct links between devices. That is, is each node or terminal is connected to each other. This is connected to that, this, that, this, and this. And if you take this, connected to that, connected to this, connected to this, and connected to that. Mesh. Like a mesh. You know about metal uh, mesh. <laughs> a star topology. This is a common one today. Star topology. Each end system is linked to a central device. So either switch or hub or router, these all the end devices or end systems are connected to this. And then this is connected to the server with one wire. Hybrid network. Collection of connected LANs where some of them have different topologies or supporting technologies. Cable, a transmission using copper wire or fiber optic. Bandwidth, measure of the amount of data that can be transmitted per second. It's a rate. Fiber optic is highest so far. Transmission media, cable. Three types of cable. One is a twisted pair. That is this, twisted. Every pair is twisted, right? Then you have coaxial. In, uh, in, in the center, there is a the co. Center, co. Co. And then I can access around it. The others are there. The dielectric insulator. Metallic shield. Otherwise, the, this, if the insulator is, insulator is not there, these two will get connected, short circuit. And here's a plastic jacket. Coaxial cable, that is this, and B, a bundled fiber optic cable. This is the bundled fiber optic cable. This one is the one cable with four twisted pair with dif differing twist rates to reduce interference. The, the twist rates are different to each other. <coughs> so the this chart shows Cost, cost, what is the lowest, what is the highest? Twisted pair is the lowest, this one. And fiber optic is the highest. Coaxial in between. Bandwidth of data rate. How much data can be sent per second? Twisted pair is the lowest. Fiber optic much higher. Coaxial is higher. 
attenuation at high frequency. What is the meaning of attenuation? Attenuation is the dropping of the strength. <clears throat> There's a, the strength of the signal. After traveling for a long time, it drops. Now, well, I can give you a day-to-day -day example. Well, well, have you seen some places where it says high voltage, 33,000 volts, where we have only 230 at home, but there are some places we are carrying on this. From the, maybe the reservoirs, the hydroelectric power generators or any other, <coughs> they, you have to travel a long distance before reaching far away, distant cities and locations. If you send 230 from there, by the time it reaches your home and my home, it will be much less than this due to attenuation, dropping of the strength. So what they do is they take high voltage, high voltage and send, then the attenuation is less than you think. So afterwards, when reaching the city, it is dropped down to 230 and then distributed to homes. So there is attenuation in data transmission also. Attenuation at high frequency, twisted pi is affected, coaxial is most affected, but five optic least affected. So no dropping in the uh, five optic because of much resistance. Then interference. Interference is from the outside world, like the, the there's a storm, storm condition which will develop, you know, like static charge or electromagnetic with the lightning, there'll be uh, electromagnetic charges going around. And because of that, the interference, that's called interference, the data can get uh, corrupted. It can get changed. And uh, twisted pair is worst affected. Five optic least affected and coaxial in between. Need for repeaters. Repeaters are needed for this because of the attenuation. So when it is affected, yes, more often, and this is less often, and yeah, both are more often. Otherwise, when it reaches the destination, there will not be any uh, appreciable signal. The strength is very low, so data cannot be used. Then we come to wireless. Earlier we did the cables. Or wire, three types cables, twisted, twisted pair, coaxial, and fiber optic. Now the radio also there are three. Wireless is a transmission using radio, microwave, or infrared. Radio, microwave, or infrared. And here also there's a chart. Bandwidth or data rate, highest is infrared. Attenuation, mainly due to rain, again, highest is infrared. Need for repeaters, again, same. Directional focusing capa capability, highest. Now, if you take infrared is used for this, as I, uh, uh, it's like uh, for remote control. TV remote control, infrared is used. <clears throat> and these are the, the frequencies given for each type. And you know the directional focus capability. You can't, you have to direct on the, uh, towards the TV sensor. There's a sensor, the TV, and that only will. You can't turn somewhere else and the TV is here and you are turning the TV remote control somewhere there. You can't. That is not possible. That's why it's called directional. Directional focusing capability. The others, now radio, if you keep a radio, in the room or outside the room or anywhere it will work. Radio means like uh, but you but your radio is the music <laughs> radio music that you get at one or the news and all that. Penetration through a wall. That one infrared is the lowest. 
radio is higher. You can keep the radio inside the room, outside the room. You can, you will uh, uh, get the news and the music. Whereas the infrared, if you go to the other room and try to change the channel of the TV, you can't. So that is penetration through a wall is not possible for infrared. Frequency ranges and frequency dependency of factors affecting wireless transmission. Then comparing cable and wireless transmission. The wireless you have is a uh, it is the earth, then you have three layers. One is the lower Van Allen belt, you may know, must be knowing. Then the upper Van Allen belt. So they are called LEO, lower, lower uh, earth orbit, medium earth orbit, and the jaw, jaw stationary. You heard about jaw stationary uh, satellites. They are, for example, if you want to transmit from this from this country to uh, another country somewhere here, it will not go. No, this way they go directly. They don't bend and go. Radio waves. So what happens is you send it to this satellite, then that satellite will retransmit to this place. So, if it is a radio or especially special radio or communication, the satellite can't move. No? Usually, the satellites you can see moving, different speeds. But here, you have to have it stationary about that country or that location. That's done by selecting the correct speed. With the Earth rotation, this also will rotate at the speed of the Earth. So then it will go everywhere when the earth rotates and turns this side, this also have gone to that place. So always on the same location. That's why it's called geostationary. Geographically stationary, it doesn't move. It moves at high speed, but geographically it looks like it's in the same place. And MEO is medium earth orbit that is used for GPS. GPS, 10 satellites to cover the globe, 10 satellites to cover the globe. This one, three satellites will do, three satellites will cover the globe. For, uh, for GPS, you need 10 satellites to cover the globe. And with those satellites, you can, you, you can uh, decide your location, uh, your location. That's how the GPS works. That's in the MEO. And LEO, the low Earth orbit, is for mobile phone networks. Yeah, there. And there are 50 satellites to power the globe. There is a task. Calculate the approximate time taken for a transmission from the surface of the Earth to a medium Earth orbit satellite. Take the speed of light to be 300,000 kilometers per second. So that's up to you to do. You have to do it like you calculate the speed of a car. Then how long does it take? Like those calculations are done in mathematics. Easy. So this is also same way you can do it and upload it or Uh, land hardware. So there are wired lands. Early years, coaxial cable was used. Nowadays, twisted pair cables probably the most widely used. Fiber optic cables are becoming more common. So even more common is and popular is the fiber optic cable, but they are expensive. In a bus configuration, the bus will consist of a series of sockets linked by cables. The ends of the bus have terminators attached that prevent signals from reflecting back down the bus. So they are 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you can see in this diagram, terminators. Diagram and these are the n caps, like two terminators at the end. The bus configuration the bus will consist of a series of sockets linked by cables. The ends of the bus have terminators attached that prevent signals from reflecting back. Each end system has a short length of cable with an RJ45 connector. RJ45, the, the normal uh, telephone wire is the, the small one. And we have the bigger one, RJ45, that's connected to the computer. In a star configuration, each end system has the same type of cable with the same connectors, but the cable tends to be much longer because it has to plug into a socket on the central device. In a star, in a star network, cables are long because each computer has to go up to that central device. A bus can be extended by linking two bus cables using a repeater. So if you just link two bus cables, if the distance is far, the attenuation, attenuation takes place and the signal is not enough. So you use a bridge or a, sorry, a repeater. Using a repeater. A repeater is needed because over long distances, signals become attenuated. Right. Sometimes a bus in segments Two segments are connected using a bridge. So that device is called bridge to connect two segments, bus segments. The LAN port on, a, on an end system is connected to a network interface card. LAN port where the uh, cable is to be connected. End system is connected to a network interface card, NIC. NIC. It has a unique address and this is what you call the MAC address, physical address. For a star network, the central device might be a hub, a switch, or a router. The switch is by far the most likely. A switch is a connecting device that can direct the communication to a specific end system. So it's, uh, they say that it's a little bit more intelligent than the hub or the router. Wireless LANs, this is the standard IEEE 80211, that is IEEE is Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. And this is the number, standard. They have standards, so this is the standard number for wireless LANs. Wi-Fi or WLAN in some countries, also it's called, but we call it Wi-Fi. It's a term used to describe wireless Ethernet. Wireless Ethernet. Ethernet is a connection from one computer to the other, from the router to the computer. Uses radio frequency transmission. So in the Wi-Fi means without wires, without wires, wireless internet, Ethernet. So uses radio frequency transmission. So for that you use radio frequency transmission, radio waves. The central device in a Wi-Fi LAN is a wireless access point. Central device in a Wi-Fi LAN. Wireless access point. This can be an end system in a wired network. This can be an end system in a wired network. End system, you know, we learned about the end system, the device or the server connected to the network. So, you know, uh, the Wi-Fi LAN is a wireless access point. 
this can be an end system in a wired network so from the from the telecom coming through a wire the the fiber optic is not uh, wireless some there are some uh, connections which are wireless but this fiber optic thing is coming from the telecom up to the web up to the wireless access point where the router is from that point either wire or wireless you can have your computer can be connected to wi-fi or to the cable there is an access there is access to the cable also in a router and usually the cable connection is better than the wi-fi the server, a system providing a service to end systems. Repeat, a device that connects two cables and provides a full strength signal to the second cable. Bridge, a device that connects two segments of a LAN. NIC, a component used to identify the end system. Uniquely, switch, a connecting device that can send a unicast message. We'll be learning unicast, multicast, and all that later. Wireless access point, WAP, the connecting device in a Wi-Fi LAN, and WNIC provides the NIC function in a Wi-Fi LAN. So wireless network interface card. This is normal network interface card. This is wireless, WNIC. Ethernet standard is IEEE 802.3. One of the two dominant technologies in the modern network world, primarily focused on LANs, evolved through five generations. What are they? They are called, earliest one was called standard or traditional, then fast, then gigabit, later 10 gigabit, and the latest is 100 gigabit. That's a data transfer speed used as a name. Use of a shared medium for message transmission. Messages likely to get corrupted. When you use, when you use a shared medium <coughs> for message transmission, their messages likely to get corrupted. A collision. We talked briefly about collision earlier. Two end systems transmit messages at the same time. Two people calling, talking at the same time, like that, out of turn. Then CSMA CD, carrier sends multiple access this, with collision detection. CD is collision detection. Voltage level on the internet cable could be detected by an end system. That is how it senses there is a transmission going on because transmission is a stream of electrons of other bits, right? Bits going on like a current. Huh? So there is a voltage. Then only will identify there is a transmission. The transmitter uses the following procedure. Check the voltage on the transmission medium. If this indicates activity, wait a random time before checking again. So <clears throat> you check if there is a voltage, that means activity. Don't send anything. Just wait for a little while. Random. If no activity detected, start transmission. Then once you find that it's not there, you run. Continuously check for a collision. If no collision is detected, continue transmission. If a collision is detected, stop transmission of the message and transmit a jamming signal to warn all end stations. After a random time, try again. So first you send a message saying that there is a uh, message coming. Jam it. Uh, I mean, otherwise the others also will get. It. Then after some time, after random time, try again. Wait for random time and try again. Modern Ethernet is switched. The star configuration has a switch as the central device. The switch controls transmission to specific end system. So the switch knows where to send the transmission. Whereas I mean the earlier the bus and all that, it doesn't know. When it sends, it sends to all the computers. The one that is uh, relevant will take. But here, it will send directly to the specific end system. 
each NC term is connected to the switch by a full duplex link. When you say full duplex, we learn about simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. So no collision is possible along that link because full duplex, full duplex, uh, for the moment, I'll tell you, it is possible to transmit on both, both directions at the same time without any collision. Switch needs to be able to store an incoming message in a buffer until the cable is free for transmission. So buffer is a memory area, no? temporary memory area. If it is not available, then that, trans that message will get lost. That message will not be stored and will be lost. So for therefore, switch needs to be able to store an incoming message in a buffer until the cable is free for transmission. Then when the cable is free, it will transmit the message. Till then it has to keep in a buffer. Since collisions are now impossible, CSMA CD is no longer needed. It's a funny, funny statement, isn't it? After reading all these things, after explaining CSMA CD, I'll be saying since collisions are now impossible, this is no longer needed. the end of part one. In the next video, we'll be seeing this point onwards. So hope, like the chapter one, you will read this, watch this several times and become an expert, do all the tasks and submit. So till then, bye.